Hello everybody, um, I hope that uh, you have done your first homework assignment uh, successfully and then you haven't had a lot of problems. I tried to uh, answer your questions via email or in the discussion post. So feel free to send me any questions again if you have regarding previous lab or this lab. So again, in this lab, I'm going to break down my lectures into three uh, short parts. And then at the end of each part, I try to include uh, some activities and some deep question, deep uh, thinking questions. And then we will go through each of them one by one. All right, so um, in this lab, we are going to focus on speech perception tasks. So, um, we are going to specifically uh, discuss um, when and why we use speech perception tasks and how we can design experiments. Uh, yeah, and then um, what data um, we are collecting. So let's start. Uh, in the first part of uh, my lecture, I'm uh, going to explain um, when and uh, why we use speech perception tasks and what are, what is the procedure like um, that is um, let's say what is steps what is stages we should go through when we are going to design a speech perception task what are let's say ingredients or components of speech perception materials and at the end, I will tell you a little bit uh, what we mean by filler items. So uh, we use filler items in other experiments as well. It is not uh, particular to speech perception tasks. Uh, so uh, we uh, try to explain, I try to explain why we need filler items and um, what should they look like um specifically in speech perception tasks all right so uh when or why we uh, use speech perception tasks so speech perception tasks are mainly focused on um, studying how or whether native speakers and learners of a language perceive the sounds of that language so if we go through some examples, uh, it'll be uh, more clear. So uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, not all uh, native speakers of English perceive all variants in the continuum from pe to be similarly. Uh, I mean, um, if the sound is close, to, uh, close enough to a, a pe phoneme, uh, they will hear a pe even though the sound is not 100% pe. So, uh, or in other languages, uh, for example, in Persian, they cannot um, dis make distinct distinction between uh, short e and long e. Uh, so that's why when they hear a word uh, like sheep. Um, as an animal, or uh, they cannot make distinction between sheep and ship, a big boat. That's why sometimes they hear ship, but they think that they have heard sheep or the other way around. So uh, these are the cases where we uh, try to use speech perception tasks to investigate the behavior of um, uh, native speakers or even learners of a, spe a specific language on uh, how they perceive sounds in that language. All right, so what is a procedure like? So we have different versions of speech perception tasks. Uh, one version is a forced choice identification task. So as the name suggests, um, this task usually involves a pair of sound categories. For example, they see a short E and long E categories on the screen, and then 
they uh, hear a sound or syllable and they should select one of these two categories they thought that they heard. So they should select whether they heard a short E or long E. And some of the sounds are clear examples of the categories. Some of them are not. They are just ambiguous. So this is the version without pictures. But in some other versions, uh, we have uh, some more creativity in that um, participants see a pair of pictures while they hear a word. For example, Persian speakers see two pictures on the screen, uh, an animal sheep and a big boat ship. So one is on the left, one is on the right, and then they have to select one of the pictures, uh, the picture that matches the word they hear. So they hear a word, for example, ship, and then they should decide whether they have heard the animal sheep or uh, the big boat ship. And then what sort of data uh, we are collecting? So we are collecting uh, uh, how often they have selected one category or picture over uh, the other, um, and then how fast they responded uh, or how fast they reacted. Uh, so uh, the point here is that um, the longer it takes for them to select one of the pictures or one of the categories, it means that um, it has been more difficult for them or it, it, it's more complicated for them to choose one of the pictures. And uh, so uh, the longer reaction time shows more complexity and then we can conclude that, okay, in this condition or for this set of stimuli or trials, uh, participants in general have had more difficulty uh, selecting the category of sound or picture. And then, uh, yeah, uh, in this lab, uh, we are only uh, focusing on the second version of the task, uh, that is the version uh, which includes the pictures. Okay, uh, so here you have uh, the you have the general flowchart, so uh, you can see different stages in each task. So uh, in the version with picture, uh, the first stage is showing them a picture, a pair of pictures, so a sheep or a ship, and then they uh, hear the word, so ship or sheep, and then they should select one of the pictures whether a uh, picture on the left or picture on the right using the label keys on the keyboard. In the uh, version without pictures, as we can see, so uh, they see two categories on the screen, they do not see pictures, and then they hear um, phoneme or syllable, and then they should select whether they heard p or b. So the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that uh, you don't have pictures. But again, as I said, we are only focusing on the pictured version, version of our task. All right, so uh, after uh, getting familiar with, the, uh, let's say, speech perception tasks, so we are going to see uh, how we can design an experiment uh, in psychopilot. So we, uh, let's say, we are, our goal is to design an experiment to test the perception of E and E by, for example, native speakers of Canadian English or whatever. So my, our research question is, do native speakers of Canadian English perceive the phonetic variance between the vowels I and E? Okay, so let's start. All right, so uh, usually in, uh, so this is some, th 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 this slide is not specific to, uh, let's say, speech perception tasks, even for other experiments as well. So in all 
experiments that you are uh, that you will design you will have two main phases the main uh, the, the first phase is familiarization phase so this is the phase where um, you uh, let them be familiar with the procedure of your test so you give them some practice items you let them do the items by themselves uh, you let them ask you any questions that they have about the research procedure i don't know about the pressing the keys any unclear uh points okay and then you should talk to them you should explain unclear points you should clarify everything you should make sure that they have understood uh, the uh, procedure and then they can um, start the main experiment so uh, this will be done this will be done through uh, including some practice items before a uh, main test uh, and then at the end of the practice item you give them some time to think and ask you any questions and then uh, you make sure that they have when you make sure that they have understood the procedure you can start the main experiment uh, and as i said this is not specific to speech perception tasks and then the test phase which includes our main trials uh, so uh, and we are only sa saving and analyzing the data uh, of this phase so uh, the data collected from the first phase or uh, familiarization phase or practice phase um, is not valid and uh, we are not doing any analysis on that. Uh, we should save and analyze data from test, test phase. And then we have three types of items in the test, test phase. We have control items, critical items, and uh, filler items. So uh, let's start uh, from critical items. So critical items are usually are target items. That is the targets that are challenging, the targets that we think might, uh, the targets that uh, our research questions about, okay, our research questions are based on. Uh, in this case, uh, the ambiguous sounds or, uh, and words. In case of Persian speakers, for example, uh, the words such as ship and sheep, all right? And then uh, by control items, they are clear sounds or clear words. Uh, we just include them in our study to have a baseline. So we expect our participants to uh, behave uh, normally or with no difficulty uh, when they are responding to control items. And by filler items, so our experiments should include some irrelevant items. So in, um, I think in next slide or even um, some slides uh, for, uh, farther, uh, I will explain um, what is the reason behind including filler items in our experiment the main reason is to distract participants from guessing the research uh, i mean uh, detail uh, because if they know the research detail if they know our uh, objective from running the experiment they might be biased they might um, behave uh, according to um, the, our expectations. So we shouldn't let them guess the uh, detailed, uh, let's say, um, objective of our study. That's why we uh, put some filler items in between uh, just to distract uh, uh, their uh, thought from guessing, all right? So, but uh, later I will explain in detail uh, how we should make filler items. All right, so as I said, um, they are items um, similar to uh, the critical items or control items, but they have different content just to distract participants from guessing the research purpose, because otherwise they might be biased. And um, 
in order to distract them correctly, uh, they should be at least twice as many ex as experimental items. Uh, in other words, if you are planning to have 20 uh, critical items, uh, you should at least have uh, 40 filler items. I know that it sometimes it is difficult, but that's the way it should work. And then um, <clears throat> if you are dealing, if you are um, uh, designing a speech perception task, uh, so if your I critical item is uh, animal sheep, so the filler item can be uh, animal sheep and animal lion because there is no similarity in between or even two completely irrelevant pictures, for example, a lion and a bear when you are uh, going to, uh, I mean, investigate whether they can uh, they make distinction between E and E you can include uh, trials such as lion and bear so in which uh, you don't have any E or E uh, sounds all right so uh, okay so these are the fillers now what we need to what do we need in our uh, uh, psychopi file definitely we need a very well written and understandable instruction and we know how to uh, make it in psychopi definitely as i said we need some picture pairs so the picture pairs should be of the same size, same style, preferably same colors, identifi identifiable. Uh, you shouldn't have a picture uh, which um, is not very clear it, it, whether it is a lion, it is a tiger. So it makes some uh, problems for participants. Uh, and um, because you have a picture pair, uh, so both pictures should be saved in, on, under one JPEG file. Uh, I mean, um, you shouldn't save pictures uh, in different files. You should put both pictures next to each other and save it in one JPEG file. And then um, when you are naming the file, uh, I recommend that uh, you... Uh, name it in, in such a way that you can uh, guess the correct order for example if it is uh, if sheep is on the left and ship is on the right uh, name it sheep underscore ship dot jpeg or, or the other way around if i name it ship underscore sheep it means ship is on the left sheep is on the right this helps you uh, later in, uh, in identifying which picture you have used. And then definitely you, you need some audio files. So usually you should record the audio files in a controlled environment, um, usually in a soundproof lab, uh, no noise, no background noise. And then uh, we need some keys, some labeled keys, uh, they should be far enough from each other. Uh, so, uh, for example, P and Q or Z and M, A and L, whatever. Uh, you should label the keys on the keyboard in advance and they should be far from each other. All right. So, uh, as deep thinking question um, think about the csv input file because as i said for our experiment we need a, C a csv file so what columns should it have what columns do you think is necessary for speech perception task so in the next uh, lecture uh, i try to explain uh, different files that we have in um, Psychopath. Thank you.